Okay, I think we are recording. So I just want to welcome everybody here to the Creative Crew class tonight. Tonight we're going to be going over Inkscape and it's a very informal class. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I will open it up to questions at the end. So if you have a question, just jot it down so you don't forget what you want to ask. Tonight we're going to do a brief description of what Inkscape is and how it can be helpful for you in your studio. <clears throat> Pardon me. This is the most talking I've done all day. Uh, so I might lose my voice. So Inkscape, oh, it is a program that can help you not only if you are a quilter, but if you're a scrapbooker, if you're a woodworker, if you are a painter, if you do anything by a pattern that you want to design, you can design it in Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector-based program where you can design graphics that you can use on your website, on Facebook, on Etsy as your thumbnails. You can also design cutting files for Brother Scan and Cut, Cricut Maker, Silhouette, uh, the big, great big cutting machines like the Rollins. You can also use the fancy laser cutters that cut wood and metal and all of that really fun stuff. All of that can be done in Inkscape. So let me just tell you some of the ways that I use Inkscape in my studio. I make my quilt patterns with Inkscape. The patterns that you have purchased or that you have gotten the free patterns from, those were designed in Inkscape. I cut applique by designing SVG cutting files in Inkscape. I cut die cuts out of scrapbook paper from designing an Inkscape. I create t-shirt graphics and cut heat transfer vinyl using Inkscape. I cut vinyl letters for my mailbox and vinyl decals for my car windows using Inkscape. There is just an endless, endless ways you can use Inkscape. I also design my quilts and Inkscape. And towards the end, Dawn had a question about how to make graph paper so she could design a quilt block using Inkscape, and we will be showing that towards the end. So that's just a small hit on some of the things you can do with Inkscape. Now, earlier today, I posted a post on Creative Crew Group, and uh, I got a couple questions from that, and then I'm going to go over those. And then if anyone here in the group tonight has a question, we'll go over that, those as well, okay? But we're really gonna try to focus on, let me join this person in. We're really gonna focus on uh, tracing bitmap images to make an SVG cutting file. So that's gonna be our large focus tonight, but I'm also opening it up for other questions as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and open up Inkscape. Let me just join these two people coming in. Inkscape is a free program. You can find it on the internet if you don't already have it by going to inkscape.org, O-R-G. Wanda, I see your picture in the screen. I can see you on the side. Can you tell me yes or no that you see Inkscape on your page? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So when you open up Inkscape, I'm working in the version that is the 0.91. Okay, I'm not working in the newest, latest, greatest version of Inkscape because it has so many features that it's too much for my laptop. So the version, version that you see on the screen here is the 0 0.91. It might look a little bit different from the version that you have, but all versions will do the things that I'm showing you this evening. So when you open up Inkscape, this is by default the screen that you will see. It'll have a box right in the middle of the screen. That's your piece of paper, okay? For right now, I'm going to take that off because when I'm designing anything, I think that box to me is a distraction. And so the first thing that I usually do when I open up Inkscape is I go to File and then I scroll down to Document Properties. 
Document properties has a lot of really cool features and we'll be coming back to this to answer Don's question towards the end. But when you open up document properties, you can change the size of the box on the screen. Uh, by default, it is an A4 size piece of paper. When I create patterns, I need to change that to the eight and a half by 11. So you could do that here. You could change it to any size, legal size piece of paper. Uh, you can do that here in document properties. But when I'm designing, I think that box is a bit of a distraction. And so I go down to display and I click on show page border and I just hide that piece of paper. And so now we have a blank canvas that we're working on, okay? So let me hit on Jean's question first because it's probably one of the more quicker questions to answer. Uh, and it's working with a photograph, I'm assuming. Uh, she said, how do I convert images into grayscale? I'm thinking she wants to make a pattern and she wants to change a colored photograph from colors to a grayscale. So, we're going to import a picture. We're going to go to File. We are going to go down to Import. And I'm going to find a picture. Let's find a picture. Picture, picture, here we go. Harlan's going to join us in our informal class this evening. And because I'm streaming, it's going to slow down my computer a little bit. Let me turn them around here. All right, here's Harlan. He has joined us for our class this evening. The very first thing I want to do when I bring in that picture is, of course, turn it around, get it situated the way that it needs to be. If you click off of that picture, you'll notice that there's no little arrows surrounding that picture. We need to make sure we select that picture, Miss Jean, and then we are going to go to this very top menu up at the top of my screen. You'll see a bunch of different little uh, tabs. We're going to click on filters. We're going to scroll down to color, and then a new box opens, and we're going to go to grayscale. A menu pops up and to be really honest, I usually just try the default. I do not change the red, the green, the blue and the lightness. You can play with all of those things. You're gonna get different results when you do. And so those are the kind of adjustments that you need to experiment with when you are in Inkscape with your photo. I usually try the default settings, which is exactly what you see here. And I hit apply to see what happens. And there's my photograph at a grayscale. So I'm hoping that that answers your question. And if you have more questions, write it down so we can come back towards the end. But to change the color photo to grayscale, filters, color, and then a grayscale. So there's our Harlan right there. We're going to save him off to the side because we'll be coming back to him. And I'm going just to change him back to color for a minute and just put him off to the side. Next, Denise had a question, how to convert a JPEG to an SVG? The same steps that I'm gonna show you, not only are the same steps for a JPEG, but they are for the different file types like a BMP image, a PNG image. A lot of the clip art that you can find on the internet will be saved in three different ways, basically. JPEG, bitmap, or PNG. I'm going to bring in, let's see. We're going to import from my desktop. I saved a couple of examples. Let's bring in uh, this pair of gloves. This pair of gloves is actually a PNG file. We're going to import the pair of gloves. 
And I'm going to go up real close on my screen so that you can see that. So let's say you found a free coloring book page and you want to make it into an applique for a mug rug or a quilt block. Let's say we want to make a little winter mug rug and we found this free pair of mittens picture on the internet. We've imported it into Inkscape. And uh, y'all hold on one second. I think we have people who are trying to come in. Let me just make sure that everybody's here. Okay. All right. Okay, we're back to our mittens. We've imported our mittens and we want to turn this into a cut file so we can cut some applique and make a whole bunch of mug rugs really quickly, right? I'm going to click on my mittens. When I do, you'll see that we can move them around. They have the little dotted box around them with the arrows in the corners. We know that it's selected. We're gonna go to this top menu and we're going to click on path. We're going to scroll down that box and we're going to select trace bitmap. When we do, a new box opens up and I'm gonna to try to move it over on my screen so hopefully you can see that pretty well. With our box selected, there are several different options within the trace bitmap feature. And depending on your picture, you might need to experiment with all of these different options. We're gonna keep it really simple tonight and we're just going to do the brightness cutoff which is gonna be selected by default when you open this up anyway. There are two thresholds that you'll want to play around with that will adjust how dark your image is. And this is gonna also hit on one of Cheryl's questions because she was creating an SVG file for her, uh, for design space. And I think this is gonna answer Cheryl's question too. Um, if you play around with these settings, it's going to adjust what happens, but we're gonna keep it right on the default, which is usually 45 and 65. You can see those two numbers right here. You can do a live preview, and it's gonna show you kind of what your file is gonna look like. We're just gonna hit okay, and we're gonna see what happened. We're gonna drag that over, and just like that, we have nodes, which means that is now a cutting file. All of those little boxes that you see in that mitten is like a roadmap that is gonna tell your cutter where to go. It's gonna give directions on where the blade needs to travel to cut out the paper or the fabric, right? And so there's your nodes. Now, if you're happy with it, with the default settings and you don't have to do anything else. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the threshold to show you what happens if maybe your image quality wasn't as great, then you might have something. Oh no, that's pretty good too. Oh no, I got a really good image. Let me bring in another one that's gonna be a little bit harder for it to do maybe. Uh, let's bring in the trees. So there's some trees. You can see at these low settings that it has only picked up on the branches of the tree. So then you can adjust your settings. Bring the thrush up. See all the things popping up in this live preview. When you adjust the settings, this is how Miss Cheryl, you would get all of your items in there just by adjusting the threshold. And I think that's gonna answer the question that she, one of the questions Cheryl had, is you need to play around with your thresholds. 
Now there's all these other different boxes and I encourage you to play around with them, uh, but they work a little bit differently. And most of the time, the brightness cutoff will give you uh, your outline shape, okay? Now that we have this outline shape of the trees, I just wanna show you something really fun. So let's say we wanna make some applique. We've just made this into an SVG. And you can tell because when we click on the nodes on the left bar, it has all of these little boxes. Those are your nodes. Another one of her questions was, how do you clean up an image that has a bunch of nodes? Just like this second tree. See all of these little boxes around this shape? That is entirely way too many nodes. It needs to be nice and simple, just like the first tree and the second tree. Even this last tree is pretty good, but the second tree has a tremendous amount of nodes. So Cheryl, this is gonna answer your question. The first thing we need to do is we need to ungroup this group of four trees, okay? And we can do that uh, by selecting our image. We can go up to path up at the top and we can select break apart. When we do, now each one of these trees has its own little box. Now I can select each tree and move it around or I can even delete it, right? If I didn't want that tree. We're gonna select this tree I'm gonna click on the nodes. We're gonna see all of those nodes. We're gonna go back up to the top. There are shortcuts. You'll see little shortcuts that you can do for your keyboard, but I wanna show you on the screen where you can find it as well. If you go up to path and you select simplify, that's going to erase a lot of your nodes and make it a lot more simple for your cutting machine to read, right? Sometimes it simplifies it too much, okay? So let's sit, bring it back to the way it was. See all of those nodes? You can go in and manually delete some of the nodes and make it more simple. And you can also adjust with the little curves, with the little handles, you can adjust your nodes this way. So you can manually simplify each one of these nodes as well. It is time consuming, but if it's a pattern that you are going to be using a lot, maybe you're someone who wants to sell a pattern, then the time you invest in the pattern is well worth it, right? You can manually select the nodes and delete them, just like this, and you can drag these handles out and move things around just like that. I'll show you something really cool with this too, is if you select it, right now it's all colored in black, but really the only thing that's going to cut out is the outline of the shape. So we can go to the fill and stroke button. Let's say uh, you're making a pattern and you don't want the whole thing filled in black, you just want the tracing outline. If you select fill and stroke, and you come over here and you click off of the fill and then you select stroke and turn on your stroke there is your cutting line or if you're making a, a pattern to trace let's say you don't have a cutting machine but you want to be able to trace this with heat and bond light or trace directly on fabric there is your outline you can even make your outline more bolder and thicker just like this or you can make it really thin. You can also change it from a solid to a dotted line, just like that. So that answers a few of Cheryl's questions. Another question that she had, I'm gonna erase these little trees. All right, I have a brother scan and cut. And my mat is a 12 by 12 inch mat. There's been some times when I've 
designed a whole bunch of SVGs and grouped them together and saved them. And it said that my file was too big to bring into Brother Canvas workspace. Let me show you a little shortcut that'll help you avoid that problem. What I like to do is I like to draw a little square box on my canvas. And this is going to be my pretend brother scan and cut mat, okay? I'm gonna go right up to these measurements and I'm gonna change it from pixels to inches. And then I'm gonna type in there the width of 12 inches and the height of 12 inches. And now I can bring my SVGs in there. Just like this, let's say I had a couple of these. Oh goodness. Let's say they're all different sizes, right? I have some small ones, the baby ones, the mama ones, and the daddy ones, right? And I wanna fit them all on my mat. I can make sure that they all fit within this 12 inch box before I even save my file, right? But you don't want to save this box. You can get rid of the box, but once all of your items are grouped within your mat space, then you can delete this and now you can save this file to bring into your cutting machine and it's going to fit on your mat and the file size won't be too big. When you design an SVG, I wanna show you how you can save it so that it can be read by your cutting machine. So I've selected all the objects on my canvas. We're going to go to file. We're going to go to save as. This is where you can name it, Mittens, SVG. And uh, the default is going to save it as an Inkscape SVG. When I'm working on something and I'm not done and I know I'm gonna come back and modify and change it, I'll save it as a working file at Inkscape SVG. Once I am done designing and I'm ready to cut this thing out, I change that from an Inkscape SVG to a plain SVG. And now I'm ready to save it. And then we can clear off our canvas. Gabby wanted to know what are the best images to work with using Inkscape. And there are several different images you can bring into Inkscape. And we talked about those a little bit. You can bring in photographs, like here is Harlan. You can work with that. You can crop photos and print from Inkscape. I print on fabric and crop my photos using Inkscape. You can also design text that you can print on fabric using Inkscape. So I love that. Y'all know I love that. But you can also bring in JPEG images, bitmap images, and PNG images. I have found my highest success rate and most ease of use is to bring in a PNG. So if you have a PNG image that you're working with, you're going to find it a lot easier, but you can work with a JPEG and uh, a bitmap. It, the smaller your JPEG and your bitmap is, the harder time you're going to get a clean SVG. You're going to have to do a lot of work with it to get it to where you want it to be. Um, and the higher contrast and less pixels and noise in your background, the better. Okay. How to clean nodes after tracing. We did that. We did that. All right. So the things that I've covered now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. If anybody has questions about what I've shown to this point, let's go ahead and go over that. 
And then Dawn had a question about creating graph paper that she could work with using Inkscape and not have to work with paper at all. So we're going to go over that before we're done tonight too. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. But if you have a question, raise your hand, or if your camera is off, click on the uh, raise hand a little button if you can find that. <laughs> Jean, did that answer your question about the grayscale, or did you want me to go into something else about that? Oh, it pretty much did. I will have to play with the settings because I just I want not to have really a true true picture. I wanted to see my lights, my mediums, and my dark areas okay. so that I can know what colors to collage darker. Then you know that's a but yeah, that I think it put me in the right path to find what I needed. Okay, great, great. All right, Evelyn, I see, uh, do you have a question? If how were you deleting things? All right, let me, uh, let me pull that back on my screen and I'll go over a couple of different ways you can delete, okay? I use my keyboard for a lot of stuff. So let me share my screen. And I'll explain exactly what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is just draw a couple circles, just like this, and let's fill them in so you can see them. There we go. So the more you use Inkscape, the faster you'll get with keyboard shortcuts. I've drawn a little circle on my canvas. I'm going to, uh, hold on one second. I'm going to mute everybody for a second. Mute all. Okay. <laughs> all right, here's my little circle. On my keyboard, I'm going to hit Control D and that's going to do duplicate my circle just like this. Control D duplicates. You can also find duplicate up in uh, Let's see. One of these will let you duplicate somewhere. Here we go. Under edit at the top menu, if you select edit, you can come down to duplicate. But when you go to duplicate, if you look on the right, you see the little keyboard shortcut, control D. A lot of these functions have shortcuts and the more you use them, the more familiar you'll get with those. So here are a bunch of circles on my screen. I'm going to select one of them and right on my keyboard, I'm going to hit the delete button. And there goes that circle and there goes that one and there goes that one. Now I'm going to select this circle and on my mouse, I'm going to right click and we can delete right from the mouse click as well. And now I'm going to select this circle and we can go up at the top and we can hit the edit button and we can delete from here as well. So there are several different ways you can delete. You can also, if you have a bunch of things on your screen, like here's a bunch of circles, and let's say I've made all these circles, but I only want to keep two of them. So a fast way to delete is I'm going to hold down the shift button and start clicking the ones that I want to delete. And you'll see those three circles have boxes around them. The other two at the bottom do not. So just those top three are selected and I can hit the delete button on my keyboard. Whoops, I unselected that one. Oh, there's a whole bunch there. There we go. And delete a whole bunch of items all at one time. So that's three different ways. Okay, I have a question. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a Cricut cutter. You had mentioned that. Mm -hmm. um, do I have to have a special adapter to go with that to transfer my um, pattern to the cutter? 
Okay, so I have a brother scan and cut and I've used a roll in before I got my brother scan and cut I had a roll in which is actually one of the bigger cutting machines. Um, and I did not and I do not have to convert anything when I open up in brother canvas workspace. Now, because I belong to an Inkscape group on Facebook, I see a lot of people who have the, um, I think it's the Cricut Maker and the Silhouette and whatever software, like in some of my videos, you'll see me open my SVG up and show you it before I cut it out. Like the last angel I showed on my screen, the, whatever program you can open up to operate your cutting machine, I do not know the software. And so what I highly suggest, if you open up a SVG, like let's say you purchased that Angel mug rug set and you opened it up and it has made it really big or really small, you might need to figure out why it's doing that because I don't have experience with all of the different cutting software. I know that there's one of them and I can't remember which one it is, but it changes the sizes of SVGs from the original size and it either makes it bigger or it makes it smaller. And a lot of people are frustrated because the SVG is the true size it needs to be and they always have to play with it to get it the right size. And I cannot remember which machine that is, but there are ways to fix that. But it also has, to do with the way that you save it. So if you're wanting to design something yourself and you come to Inkscape, if you choose that default Inkscape SVG, that gets <coughs> messed up when you bring it into your cutting software, it's gonna change the size of it. But if you select plain SVG, like I showed, then most of that stops. Most of it stops, that'll fix that issue. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any more questions about converting uh, like a piece of clip art into an SVG? <coughs> Lisa? Yes. It's Susan. Frank. Uh, can you, like the on the mittens, can you separate the different parts, like the stripes and the cuff and make them a different color? Absolutely. So let me, let me share my screen and we'll bring in the mittens again. <coughs> you. Because that's really helpful. If you notice a lot of patterns, like a lot of my, um, a lot of my patterns, the pieces will be separated and you layer yeah. them but you don't necessarily want it all to be one piece when you're tracing, right? So let's get rid of these circles. Let's scoot Harlan off to the side there. And let's bring the mittens back in. All right, we're bringing the mittens back in. Right now it is currently a PNG file, okay? We just saved a free piece of clip art off the internet and here is our mittens. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom into them a little bit closer so you can see better. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna change this from a PNG file to an SVG. We're going to go to Path and Trace Bitmap. This box is gonna come back up and by default, it's going to have brightness cutoff selected. You're gonna have your th two different threshold numbers that you'll wanna play with. If the first time you do it, it, do it doesn't get all your pieces, keep playing with these two buttons until it does. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now what's changed is there was a box surrounding this gray area, which is really faint. That's the background of the PNG. And now there's a dotted box that goes exactly to the mittens. We know that it's created an SVG. I'm gonna close this little box. Here's our PNG and here is our SVG. And if you get confused which one is which, come over to the left bar 
and select the nodes. And if the little boxes show up on all your pieces, you know that it has converted that into an SVG. I'm happy with the quality of that SVG. So I'm just gonna get rid of the PNG to make it nice and simple. And I'm gonna make this bigger on the screen. Now there's a couple of things, there's a couple of ways you can attempt this, Miss Susan, but we're gonna select our SVG, and right now it's grouped both mittens together. Mm -hmm. So with them both grouped together like this, we're gonna go up to this top menu and we're going to select half. We're gonna come down to break apart. And when I hit this, the whole mitten's gonna turn black for a second, okay? Just like that. But when oh. it does, <clears throat> You see all of these little boxes, right? There's a ton of little boxes showing up. Those are all your different parts. With everything still selected, I'm gonna go to the fill and stroke box and I'm going to turn off the fill and everything's gonna disappear, but you're gonna see all these boxes still on the screen. So you haven't deleted your pieces, they're still there. We're gonna go to stroke, which is the second tab in the fill and stroke box. And we're going to, right now it's turned off, we're going to turn it on just like that. And there's all of our pieces, they show up. And at this point, we can move each one of these pieces out. Hmm. So what I like to do is I like to grab the mitten shape, this outline on the very outside, and just move that over like this. So there's my applique piece for the mitten, right? There's mm -hmm. the base of it. Now we could grab these cuffs, just select all the cuffs by drawing a box around them just like that. I'm going to, on my keyboard, hit Control G and that groups them together. There's my cuffs. Here's this bottom portion. Here's the top portion, and here's the two stripes. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you could print this off, right? Remember at the very beginning, I erased the box, the piece of paper that shows up, right? We're gonna bring that back. We're gonna go to File and Document Properties. I'm gonna click on the display. I want that box to show back up. And my printer takes an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'm gonna select US letter. And now here's my piece of paper. We need to move all of these pieces. And you might have to save it as a couple of different pages. If they all don't fit, you could rotate them to make them fit like this. Like that. Uh -huh. Anything in that box is going to be saved. Now I like to save my, uh, my templates for applique to trace with as a PDF. And you can do that here in Inkscape as well. So anything in this box is going to be saved. So if you have this going into your box, mm -hmm. the little bottom of that piece is gonna be saved. So make sure everything is clear off the page. At this point, we can go to File, Save As. We're gonna save it on the desktop. We're gonna call this Mittens PDF 1 because we're gonna have two pages, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to change it from an Inkscape SVG. We're going to save it as a PDF. So there's our first PDF, and now we can move these off the page and bring in our second page pieces. And now we would save this as page two. We'll have two pages for our mitten templates to trace with, right? Is that helpful? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. 
Thank you so much. You're welcome. I uh, was wondering how you printed it. You know, you could just print it because I don't have a cutter. So you change it to the PDF. That's awesome. Yeah, you can. You don't have to have a cutting machine to use Inkscape. You can make the tracing templates. That's why, you know, a lot of the patterns that I offer have both the tracing template and it has an included separate SVG for those who have cutting machines, but you don't have to have one to make the pattern, right? You can make it without it. So yeah, you would want the tracing. <clears throat> I have a question about the breaking it apart. Okay. I was just playing around with a drawing actually that I'd scanned in and was trying to break it apart, but it's not breaking apart in the way I want it to. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there a way to do it like manually, like separate parts or? Uh, well, it's hard to see exactly what you've done to this point because I can't see your screen. Uh, yeah, but and it's like, well, um, I have a flower and the, the flower petals came apart from each other just fine, but then the leaves are all stuck together with the silhouette for the, for the background. And it's like, how in the heck? It's like, I don't I'd know. really want to see what you, what you <laughs> have and okay. know how you've gotten to where you are because all of that plays a role in to, tell you how to fix that. Okay. <laughs> if I, I can't see exactly what you're talking about, makes it really hard to answer that specific question. Okay. But like, if you want to take a picture of it and post it on our group page, I might be able to tell you what's gone wrong or okay. how to fix it. Evelyn, did you have a question? Uh, well, yeah. How do, so how do you send the SVG to the cutting thing? Okay, so once you save your SVG, you're going to need to open your SVG up in your cutting machine software. So if you if you watched that angel mug rug, the vintage angel mug rug, uh -huh. I show in part of that video, my brother canvas workspace on my computer and how I imported the SVG file and moved okay. all the pieces around so that I could put the different pieces of fabric on my mat and it cut everything out all at one time, you'll need to transfer the saved SVG file either with a USB stick straight to your cutting machine or to like design space or, uh, yeah, it's called design space, whatever a Cricut or silhou Silhouette uses, Brother uses Brother Canvas Workspace. Okay. All right, uh, if there's no more questions about turning uh, an image into a SVG or how to break apart or even save as a PDF so you can trace a template, Dawn had a question when we first came in uh, and she said she'd like to design some graph paper. Uh, I think she said she had carpal tunnel. If, if I'm right, Dawn, I can't remember but she'd like to be able to design a quilt block right on Inkscape, right on our computer without paper. So I'm gonna turn my screen back over and I'm gonna show you that before we're done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of our little mitten parts. Thank you very much, Lisa. I'm You're sure welcome. that. You're welcome. Yes, thank you, Lisa. You're I'll welcome. Get it now. Yay, good. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share one more thing before we go and you might find it helpful. But if you have to go, come back on the replay, okay? I'm going to mute everybody for just a minute. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to say goodbye to Harlan. Bye, Harlan. All right, on default. When you open up Inkscape, you got this box right here. I like to design without it. So I'm gonna to go to document properties and I'm going to go under display and I'm just gonna click off that box. So it's not in my way and I don't get confused. So we're working with a blank canvas and let's say we wanna design a little baby quilt, right? The first thing that I do is I make some graph paper because that's how my mind works. I need to graph out my blocks. I need to graph out my quilts. And for me, it just makes the whole process much easier. And I either do that on paper or I open up my laptop right here at my workstation and I use Inkscape. 
So we're going to go to File. We're going to go back down to Document Properties. And a little bit ago, I said we'll be using this box towards the end. So here we are with Document Properties. I'm trying to move this. It doesn't want to move. All right, hopefully you can see that. It doesn't want to move. When you open up Document Properties, it, you're on the first page, but there's several different tabs. It's like a, it's like a file cabinet, right? We're going to go over to Grids, and we're going to choose the Grids folder. When you do, you, your little box will look like this, and we're going to click on New. All of a sudden, on our page, it looks like graph paper, right? But we can customize our graph paper. By default, Inkscape likes to work in pixel measurements. So, and I, as a quilter, I want to work in inches, right? That's just how my mind works. So we're going to click on grid units. We're going to change this from pixels to inches. There's four little tabs underneath of there and spacing X and spacing Y. That's your vertical lines and your horizontal lines of your graph paper. We're going to change those measurements. And because I like to cut my blocks with a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to change the spacing to 0.25 inches. That's our quarter inch seam allowance, 0.25, just like this. Both the X and the Y spacing is 0.25. You could make this two inches. You could make it five inches. You could make it whatever size you want your graph paper to be. And that's the awesome thing is that you can make your graph paper any uh, measurement that you want. So here we are at quarter of an inch by quarter of an inch. I'm going to zoom right in closer. Each one of these blocks on my screen now represents a quarter of an inch. So I could draw out a little quilt block just like this. When it's selected at this menu here, we're going to change this from pixels to inches. You can change this the default, but I just manually change it. When it's selected, you see our quilt block right now is 1.261 inches wide. We can change this to 5.5 inches wide and 5.5 inches high. So there is our five and a half by five and a half inch block. Then we can do all kinds of things, right? We can click on the draw curves and straight lines tool on the left. We can draw a line from here to here. And then we can divide this triangle just like that. Of course, you can play with it to get it exactly right. You could select the paint bucket tool and we'll do red here. And then we'll select blue here, paint bucket tool, blue. And then this big one, we're going to select the background and unselect paint bucket tool. We're going to choose gray and fill that square gray. So let me zoom out just a little bit. And I'm just playing around, so I'm going really fast, OK? You can come back to the replay and watch all these steps again. Uh, I'm going to select all of these pieces, and I'm going to group them together. You can right click on your, mount, on your mouse, scroll down, and hit Group. So now when you click on this, all of your pieces are going to move at the same time, right? Now on the keyboard, I'm going to hit Control D duplicate. We're going to make another one and another one. We'll make one more like this. Now to have some fun, we can turn these around like this. Now I can select all of them and group them together duplicate it and move it down. I can even turn that around like this. 
and I can keep on duplicating and making them bigger. So a lot of, actually all of the at home quilt block, the traditional quilt blocks were designed just like this so that I could show you pictures of what the quilt would look like. But once you come in closer, let's ungroup it. You can tell by the lines on the graph paper how big your pieces need to be, right? Because each one of these is a quarter of an inch, each one of the line, each one of the little boxes. But also when you ungroup them, yeah, they're all ungrouped. There we go. This one little gray triangle piece, that is 5.378 by 5.378. If you're good in working in triangles, this might be helpful for you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it'll tell you the size of each one of these pieces as well. And then this is the basic layout of your block. Just like that. So that's something really fun that you can do with Inkscape as well. Uh, unmute. Okay. <laughs> All right. I see Carla, you have a question. Yes. Um, back to the importing like clip art. If you have imported like colored clip art that's already colored in. Yes. When you change it, will it do each color, will it separate each color automatically? Okay, so there's a couple different ways you can do that. And uh, we didn't go quite into doing color, but let me just pull that up so you can see it. You're gonna have to be playing around with the different settings, but I'm gonna show you real quick how you do that. Let me do file new. Let's bring in a new canvas. I'm going to bring in the trees again. So here's my trees. Uh, let me go up closer to my trees, just like that a little bit. We're going to go to path and trace bitmap. So when that trace bitmap box pops up, we've been working in the default setting, which does a vast majority of your transformations from an, a picture to an SVG. But if you go down to the bottom, you'll see multiple scans creates a group of paths. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna stack multiple cutting files on top of each other based on color, okay? So if we take a look at these trees, we see the brown, we have two shades of green, we have an orange and a yellow. That's five different colors in this SVG. So let's come down towards the bottom and we'll just go over this a cup real quick. This is something you're gonna have to play with if you're working with a color uh, p uh, picture. But Instead of brightness cutoff, we're gonna choose colors and we're gonna change this to five scans. And what it's done is it's stacked five SVGs on top of each other. So we're going to select this and we're going to right click and we're going to hit ungroup and it's gonna separate all of the colored pieces, okay? So we have our brown, Little did we know there was a little bit of green in each one of these pieces that we did not see. <laughs> there was some yellow in each one of these pieces we did not see, and there's our orange. So Lisa, I still see the the. Yeah, you I don't got the wrong the screen up. Oh, you got the wrong screen up. <laughs> I've done all that on the wrong screen. Yeah. All right. 
I still see pinwheels. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I had two inks. Oh, okay. We're going to start all over again. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. See all of my pieces? Yeah. yeah. See all of my pieces? All right. We're going to do the trees real quick. I'm going to bring them in. We're importing the trees. <sighs> all right. There's our trees. In the trace bit map, we're going to go down here to colors and we're going to choose five colors because that's how many different colors that I see in this image, right? We're going to hit OK. And then we're going to ungroup these pieces. So we have the brown tree trunks. We have green, we have yellow, and we have orange. So if you wanted to make a really easy template of the whole piece, I'd select the orange copy and delete the rest, right? Because that's going to give you the whole shape of the tree. If you wanted to make little trunks that go on top, you could also save the brown copy as well because there's your little tree trunk, right? Mm -hmm. So that could go on top as a layer. These are pieces that I would probably just delete. You could change these from orange. You could just do a fill and stroke. Uh, you could turn the fill off and turn the stroke on. So there's your tracing template. You could do the same thing for the tree trunks and give yourself a little tracing template just like that. So there's your basic pieces. Now I do have a little penguin that I'll bring in and he has some color on him too. <laughs> Cute. So there's a little penguin. <laughs> Let's go back to the original default setting of brightness cutoff. And we can adjust the threshold and see what all is going to show up. So there's our penguin. We can separate these pieces by going to a path and a break apart. While they're all selected, I have not unclicked off of it. We're going to go back to the fill and turn the fill off. We're going to go to stroke and add a stroke around each piece. But now you'll see I can move his belly. I can move both of his orange feet. I can move his face. So let's say you wanted to group the white pieces together for his face and his belly. There's those two pieces. Let me get rid of that tree. <laughs> Here's the outline for his entire body right there. If you wanted to make that one piece, Here is his mouth pieces. If you look really closely, there's that dark orange underneath the two mouth pieces that it's made that piece as well. So if you wanted to do that, you could do that as well, or you could delete that and just do the, the beak itself. You could do the eyes. Oops. Here's his eyes and there's the pupils of his eyes. Now at this point, just double checking, we can go over to the edit pass by nodes. These pieces have nodes. You could cut this out of paper, fabric, cork, felt, foam board, any of the fun stuff that your cutter will do, vinyl. Or you can set up a PDF and make this a tracing template if you do not have a cutting machine and you can trace the pieces with like heat and bond light or trace it right on fabric, whatever you wanted to do. Does that answer the question of doing it in color? Oh, hold on, you're muted. Hold yes, on. thank okay. you very much. All right. You're so welcome. I know that's a lot of information and a lot of this y'all 
is you're going to pull an image in that you want to do and it's not going to work right just like dawn was messing with her flower and it doesn't work a lot of those settings you're going to have to play with the numbers play with the settings until you get it to look the way you want it to look and if you're extremely new to Inkscape, that can be very time consuming, but you're not going to get proficient at it unless you work with it a lot. I've been using Inkscape 12 years. And so I'm really mm. fast with it, but you're not, when I first started using it, I didn't know I had to learn all of this stuff. And so, you know, the more you work with it, the easier you, it gets, yeah. I think that's answered all the questions from the post. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lisa. It was very You're important. So that so was, that's interesting. Yeah. Who likes to print on fabric? Print quilt labels, stuff oh, like yeah. that. You can yeah, design, true. yeah. You can design text. Like one of the very <laughs> first patterns that's that I found you. Uh, was the uh, the love letters kit and in that love letters kit for the mug rug oh. is a panel that prints script on fabric and that was like a little story poem that I typed out and made up and I designed it as a PDF and you can print that right on fabric so a lot of people who like to make their own quilt labels use Inkscape because you can design with all kinds of fonts and uh, design your quilt label right on Inkscape and print it right on a piece of fabric. Uh, or you can design your own panels. You can scan a piece of fabric and bring it, bring that picture into Inkscape and crop it whatever size you want and print off a reproduction piece of fabric. I never thought about that. Huh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> I'll see if All I can show things. Yeah. So let me see if I can show you. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of this, but I, because I mentioned it, I want to show you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're going to get rid of our little penguin parts. <laughs> I'm going to create a circle. So there's our circle shape. I'm going to import. Let's see. I don't know that I have any fabric. Hold on a second. Swatches, swatches, swatches. Give me just a second. Swatches. So here's some fabric swatches. Let's open up these leaves. It might take a second because I'm streaming at the same time. So my computer's working double time, but we'll give it a second. So how did you For get those So the <clears throat> Ms. Carla, you're freezing up, but I'm going to show you this and then we'll see if I can answer your question. The fabric swatches are is stuff that I have scanned with my scanner or you can go online and find Google search fabric swatches and save them to your computer. So okay. here's a piece of leaf fabric that I had. And let's say that I want to design uh, a flower. Let's just say this is going to be the center of my flower, right? You can bring that flower right over top of that leaf fabric. You can right click on your mouse and set clip. Oh, you have to select both the backgrounds and the circle, set clip. <laughs> and there is my circle of leaf fabric. 
I'm going to wow. duplicate that. We're going to release the clip. So there's my fabric swatch and my circle template that I'll save for later. And here's my little circle of my leaf fabric. Mm. That's neat. Yep. You could uh, create text. So let's just say. So there's my name. There's the text. Let's say I'm designing a quilt label and I want it to say from Lisa, but I don't want it just to be black letters. I want it to be leafy green and orange and yellow, right? So there's my text. I'll go up to text or path, object to path. Now it's got little nodes around it. I'll bring this right over top of my leafy green, my leaf fabric. Select both items, set the clip, and there's my name. So cute. <laughs> Love, cute. <laughs> Love that. We'll release the clip. And now we'll put a little outline around my name. So I'm going to select the black text. I'm going to go to fill and turn the fill off. We'll put a little stroke on it. We'll make the stroke wider like this. And now we can add a little stroke around my name so it just sticks out of the fabric a little bit better. Hmm. It's neat. Hmm. So there's my leafy name. <laughs> I love I guess it. You, you could turn this into embroidery too, huh? Uh, Inkscape has an embroidery model and I have not downloaded and installed the embroidery model because I use uh, Embrilliance and Embrilliance does everything that I want it to do pretty simply. And uh, so I have not downloaded the, it's like an add on to Inkscape, but okay. it will. And there are tutorials on YouTube that'll show you how to do that. I don't know anything about that module that you add on to Inkscape for embroidery. Are, are you talking about to go to an embroidery machine? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. I might look into that then. Mm -hmm. And I forget yeah. the name of it. It's called Stitch or something. I have Digitizer, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you go to Inkscape.org, and you go to extensions, there's a little tab called extensions. There are hundreds of extensions. They're like little module add-ons to Inkscape. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one for embroidery that will digitize embroidery. So if you wanted to make up your own embroidery and digitize it, and uh, keep in mind that the more extensions you add to your Inkscape, the more you're going to bog down your Inkscape. So you might have to wait longer for a file to process and stuff like that. Okay. But if you have a newer computer or one that isn't bogged down with a bunch of files like mine, <laughs> then it'll probably add the extensions with no problem. I most probably have to get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I slow down. <laughs> yes, yes. Evelyn, I see your hand is up. Did you have another question? Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to lower your hand. There we go. All right. Does anybody have questions? I know that was a lot of information and it might even be helpful to come back on the replay and just revisit. Believe me when I tell you that everything that I showed you tonight, there are tons of YouTube tutorials that break it down for each one of the things I showed you. And they really just focus on that one thing so you can grasp it. And it's not a whole bunch of stuff in one video, but there are hundreds of YouTube videos showing everything I showed tonight. And uh, yeah, it's just like a crash. Actually, I do. I did have a question. Okay. <clears throat> but I think you might have answered it. I was wondering, like when you had the penguin up, if you have a clip art you bring in and you want to put like your name on that penguin. Yes. How you how you would do that and then print it out. And okay. I, I think you might have 
the same so way you, you do. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so you want to make you want to make a tracing template for applique, or do you want to make a penguin that you're going to print on paper or fabric? Which one do you want to okay. do? For applique. For applique. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I would do is I would separate the penguin and the name anyway, because you. Uh, let me show you. Let's see. This one has my name in it already. So let's get rid of the leaves. Let's get rid of the circles. All right, here's my name. Let's bring in the penguin. Oh, we're going good. to turn that into an SVG just like that. So let's say we want our penguin to be five inches tall. Or here he is. Let me bring in my piece of paper first, okay? Here's my piece of paper. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I was trying to find my little piece of paper. There it is. Okay. So here's our penguin. We're going to break that apart so I can separate the pieces. Pass, break apart. We're going to unfill all those pieces and then we're going to add an outline, stroke paint. And before I move it, you say you want to put a name on the penguin? Yeah, I was just saying the penguin because you already showed that, but by any kind of a, a penguin, a pig, whatever, you want to put yeah. a name on, the, um, on him somewhere. Right. Okay, so here's the name, and let's just pretend you're going to applique it there. Right. To trace it, you know, you can resize it just like this until you get it the size you want. Maybe you want it a little bit bigger like that. Once you have you it the size. Actually do, you can actually do that and then put the name on it like that and then just print it out on fabric and the name would already be on it. You could do that, you yes. To. Yep, okay. you could even color these pieces in. If you, want, if you have a color printer, you could select each one of these pieces Oh, okay. If you wanted to print on paper, that's why I was asking because uh, if you're just tracing as a template, then I would separate these pieces to make it non-confusing, right? Right. But uh, if you wanted to print it, you could color these pieces by just selecting each one of the pieces and color them. And then you could print him right out, just like this. Of course, I'm not gonna take the time to do all of that, but yeah. yep, you could put the name just like this and send that right to your printer. Oh, okay, okay. But if you're making it for applique that you wanna trace, then uh, most certainly I would probably separate the pieces just well, to make it, like you yes. Yes. And like the feet, the feet are both the same. So you really only need one and you don't have to take up all the space. You just need one, but you, you're going to make two of them. Same with the eyes. Right. You really only need one eye. They're both the same, but you could make two when you make your applique. That's going to save some space on your, <coughs> on your paper. Just like that. Right. Does that make sense how you could add your name and applique to a piece? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. All right. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to stop recording and then we'll say our goodbyes. But I just want to thank everybody for joining my unofficial class on Inkscape. And we'll see y'all next time. Bye, oh, everybody.
Y'all say bye to the camera. Bye, bye, bye camera. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Felicia. <laughs>